Welcome back to the PX Grid Developer video series. In today's video, we'll be going over how to set up a basic Java application in Eclipse, import the PX Grid SDK, and configure a PX Grid connection. We'll be using a standalone ICE node to verify that our Java application has indeed connected. So let's get started. I'll be using Eclipse Neon in these tutorials, and I've already set up a sample workspace called PX Grid App Tutorial. Now let's create a new Java project. The first thing we need to do is import the pxgrid SDK into this project as a library resource. Right click on the new project and create a new package under the source folder. Call it resources. Copy the pxgrid SDK jar files from the lib folder into this resources folder. Now we need to add these to our build path. Right click on the project and select properties. Select Java build path and choose the libraries tab. Then click on add jars. Select all the jars you just imported into, the so into source resources. Click apply and then okay. You should now see a reference libraries option in the project explorer and all the px grid jars located in there. Next, we need to add the appropriate sample certificate key stores so our application can use these when connecting to ICE. Drag the two key store files into the resources package, client sample one JKS and root sample one JKS. Again, you can use any third party certificate for the px grid client. Just make sure you upload these into ICE as shown in the previous video. Here I'm using the sample certificates. Now let's create a new package for our source code. Let's call it main. In main we need to make one class, session subscribe. While in this video we'll be focusing on just connecting the client to pxgrid, we will eventually have this client subscribe to pxgrid's session capability and receive notifications like in the samples. In our session subscribe class, we'll write a main method as the entry point to our program. Now to create a connection, we need to load and store a few properties first. I'm going to declare these properties as private static variables and then load them in via properties file. They are the Java key store file names and passwords for both the client sample one JKS and the root sample one JKS. Then we need an array to hold the pxgrid server host names, a string to hold our username, another array for the groups our client are, is a part of, and a string to hold our description. We should see these values reflected in the ice pxgrid admin UI when the client actually connects.
Now I'm going to write a properties file and then a function to load these properties into the variables we just declared. Create a file under resources, call it tutorial.properties. This file will contain all the locations and the necessary values for the, of the properties you want to configure. My JKS files are in the resources folder and their passwords are Cisco123. The iServer hostname is configured. I've got a username for my client, and I want to be part of the session and ANC groups. And I have a small description of the client so my admin knows more about me. Now I'm going to write a quick load properties method to put these values into my variables.
Now if I run my application, you'll see that all the values are loaded into the respective variables. Time to configure the PX root connection. Since we are authenticating via certificates, we'll be using the Certificate Authentication Configuration class. This class allows us to insert the appropriate configuration into our PX grid connection. First, we create a Certificate Authentication Configuration object. Then we call set hosts and pass along our host names. Next, we can set our usernames, groups, and the description.
And now we need to create an SSL context and set that context in our configuration as well. Internally, the PXGrid client library uses encryption at the transport layer in all communication with the PXGrid controller. This is TLS with mutual authentication. This requires a key store and a trust store. The key store contains a certificate key pair that gets used during the TLS handshake between the PXGrid client and the PXGrid controller. Currently, the Java API only supports JKS key stores. To create an SSL context, we use the SSL context factory get instance method and pass along the protocol we want to use. Here I'm using the recommended TLS v1.2. V1 on our SSL context object, we then call the init method and pass along the key managers, trust managers, and a null value for the secure random object. The key managers are created by using the factory method get instance of the key manager factory class. This class is initialized with the Java key store from above and its password. It is vital that the key stores are password protected. Likewise, the trust managers are created from the trust manager factory class. Though it is initialized from a Java key store as well, it is actually a trust store that contains the certificate of the certificate authority that signed the PXGrid controller certificate. If the certificate authority's certificate is part of a chain, make sure the entire chain is added to this trust store. The null value for the secure random object will create a default random number generator, which is good enough for our purposes. I'm going to also write two methods, get key managers and get trust managers, to load and parse the JKS files and return the actual key managers and trust managers as arrays.
Okay, now our configuration is complete. We can now declare a grid connection object and pass along our configuration to the constructor. We'll also use the reconnection manager to maintain this PX grid connection. The reconnection manager allows, us, allows our client to reconnect automatically to PX grid if a connection fails for any reason. This can especially be useful for in maintaining crucial connections to PX grid for vital information. Once we call start, the client will connect to PX Grid. We'll now have our main thread sleep for a few minutes and then call stop to disconnect our session. While our client sleeps, we'll check the ICE admin UI for any updates. Click the Run button and the application should start up. We can see informative logs and then the connected message. Let's go to ICE. As we can see from the table, the PX Grid admin has approved our client. We can see the name, description, and the group the client is a part of. This concludes the first part of our tutorial. In the next video, we'll go over subscribing to session notifications and printing them out in our new client. So stay tuned.